Distinguished guests this evening, Professor Datta, invitees, colleagues, and students. On behalf of the ILM family, it is a great pleasure to welcome you all to this very important event of the ILM social and academic calendar of 2014. ILM launched the Global Thinker Award in 2006 to celebrate and honor those distinguished individuals who have contributed substantially to the global stream of consciousness, ideas, and knowledge. The first award was conferred on Lord Bhikkhu Parikh in the September of 2006. Professor Prahlad, the awardee in 2008, who unfortunately is no longer with us, spoke on the results of his research on wealth at the bottom of the pyramid and what it means to India. His influence is seen from the fact that at ILM, just as many other business schools across the world have developed courses based on his work. More importantly, his body of knowledge continues to enthuse a growing band of entrepreneurs, professional managers, venture capitalists, among others. Last year, Mr. Sam Pichoda, the pioneer of telecom of India, spoke on knowledge, technology, and innovation, transforming the 21st century. He concluded his speech by saying, and I quote, I see two streams of hopes that will lead us together into building a new India. One, technology which includes knowledge, innovation, and all that to solve the problems of tomorrow in a different way. And two, young talent, unquote. The reason I mention only three of the awardees and not all seven of them is the paucity of time. But even this way, a limited reference to signify that in this short period, of seven years, the ILM Global Thinker Award has been able to justify its name, its underlying ethos, and possibly also the ambition. As a matter of record, our other four distinguished awardees were Dr. M.S. Swaminathan in 2007, 
Lord Meghna Desai in 2009, Dr. Shashi Tarun in 2010, and Professor Andre Vettel in 2011. Of the many achievements of ILM in the last years, I would like to highlight one of which we are very proud of. In September last year, ILM was inducted in the leadership group, group by the Na United Nations Principles for Responsible Management Education, the PRME initiative. The leadership group works on planning and implementing the framework of responsible management and leadership education, IILM, together with Babson College USA and the Copenhagen Business School Denmark, is leading the faculty development initiative for PRME. ILM is also one of the 10 members of the PRME advisory group from schools across the world who is responsible for formalizing the PRME's policies and driving the PRME agenda across schools. ILM is the only business school from India to be a part of this lead group of champions and advisors. We are honored that Professor Shomitra Datta has been gracious in consenting to accept the eighth ILM Global Thinker Award. Professor Shomitra Datta is the 11th Annie and Elmer Linsett Dean and Professor of Management in the Johnson Graduate School of Management at Cornell University. Born in Chandigarh to Air Marshal Dr. R.K. Datta and Mrs. Tara Datta, Professor Shomitra Datta is an engineer from the Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi, majoring in computer networks. He is an MBA a master's in computer science, and a PhD in artificial intelligence from the University of California, Berkeley. Professor Datta today is an authority on the impact of new technology on the business world and in all aspects of innovation in the knowledge economy. Throughout his distinguished career, he has focused on how to drive business innovation and growth through the right combination of innovative people and technology. With these few words, I once again welcome all of you and invite Professor Shuchi Parashar to read out the citation in honor of Professor Shomitra Datta. Thank you. Professor Shomitra Datta is the 11th Anne and Elmer Lindsay Dean and Professor of Management in the Samuel Curtis Johnson Graduate School of Management at Cornell University. Born and raised in India, he has studied, lived, and worked in Asia, America, and Europe. He is married to Lourdes Casanova, a senior lecturer at Cornell University who hails from Barcelona, Spain, and they have a daughter, Sarah, who is currently finishing her PhD in biomedical engineering at the University of Oxford, UK. In an illustrious career spanning 23 years, Professor Datta has held positions at various educational institutions and corporations of global repute. He most recently served as a Roland Berger Chaired Professor of Business and Technology and was the founder and academic director of a Digital Econ Economy Research Center, eLab at INSEAD, a top-ranked global uh, business school with campuses in Fontainebleau, France, Singapore, and Abu Dhabi. In his previous roles, Professor Datta has worked at INSEAD as the Dean of External Relations, the Dean of Executive Education, and Dean of uh, technology and e-learning. He has also served as a visiting professor at numerous universities, including the Haas School at the University of California, Berkeley, the Oxford Internet Institute at the University of Oxford, the Judge School at the University of Cambridge in England, Solvay Business School, Brussels, and the Athens Laboratory for Business Administration. Professor Shomitra Datta has, to his credit, over 20 books and monographs, he is credited with publishing 13 editions of the Global Information Technology Report, co-published with the World Economic Forum, and six editions of the Global Innovation Index, co-published with the World Intellectual Property Organization. Both the mentioned reports have been used by several governments around the world in assessing and planning their technology and innovation policies. Professor Datta brings a unique global perspective to his research and thinking. He is an authority on innovation in emerging markets, having done intense research around the Latin American, Chinese, and Indian markets. He has co-written several important books on technology-enabled business innovation, including Ask, Measure, Learn, Using Social Media Analytics to Understand and Influence Customer Behavior, with co-author Lutz Finger. The Bright Stuff, How Innovative People and Technology Can Make Old Businesses New, with co-authors Arnaud Damir and Sandeep Srivastava. 
Other works include the book Innovating at the Top, which distills the proven ways that senior executives can improve innovation performance from interviews with the CEOs of nine highly innovative international corporations and another book, Throwing Sheep in the Boardroom, which reveals how online social networking is transforming our personal lives, our organizations, and our behavior as consumers and citizens. His works have been widely published in the Harvard Business Review, the European Management Journal, in Management Science, and in a myriad of business magazines, newspapers, and blogs, including Information Week Brazil, Business World India, Chief Executive Magazine, Forbes, and the McKinsey Quarterly. Professor Shomitra Datta is one of the very few faculty members around the world and across all disciplines who have been a member of the Privileged Davos Circle, an association of longtime participants in the annual Davos meeting of the World Economic Forum. He has been invited to Davos for more than 10 years and has engaged in a number of multi-stakeholder initiatives to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. He also has been a member of the Global Advisory Council on Social Media at the World Economic Forum Geneva, a member of the ICT Advisory Board for the Government of Qatar, and a member of the Advisory Board for the IBM Center for CIO Leadership, New York. Professor Tata has co-founded three firms and is on the boards of several startups. He has been on the advisory boards for several international business schools and think tanks like the Fung Global Institute, Hong Kong, the Case Center at Babson Limited USA, the ISDI Spain, the European School of Management and Technology Berlin, the Business School at the American University of Cairo, and the Lisbon Council Brussels. He received the European Case of the Year Award from the European Case Clearing House in the years 1995, 97, 98, and the years 2000 and 2002. Professor Datta has been the recipient of several coveted honors and global awards, including the EFMD Case Writing Award 2013, Innovex Award 2013 for Research in Global Innovation from the Government of Israel, and the Light of India Award from the Times of India Group in June 2012. IILM is honored to confer the Global Thinker Award 2014 on Professor Shaumitra Datta. May I request our chairperson, Mrs. Malvika Rai, to confer the 8th IILM Global Thinker Award on Professor Shaumitra Datta. May I now request Professor Datta to deliver his special lecture on innovation at the speed of life, India in a flat world. Good afternoon. It's indeed a privilege and honor to be invited here today, and I'm very deeply grateful Mr. and Mrs. Rai, Director Sapna Popli, distinguished faculty members, students, and guests. I would not be here today, of course, without the support of many others around me, including my teachers at various schools, at IIT Delhi, and of course, my family, my wife, Lourdes, my daughter, Sarah, who are not here today with me in Delhi, but my parents are here with me and Moff, my sister, is here with me, and I'm very grateful for the support. So I'm here in front of you today to talk to you and to share with you some of my ideas around innovation. Last year, you had a excellent presentation by Dr. Sam Petroda on how technology innovation is changing 21st century. 
This year, I will talk a little bit more about innovation, but from a more personal human dimension. Because I do believe that the combination of technology and people is indeed changing the world around us dramatically. Now, my presentation will have three themes, and the three themes can be described by a pair of words for each theme. The first theme really is around innovation as being driven by desperation or by inspiration. The second theme is really around innovation as being driven by the creative tension across efficiency and creativity. And the third theme really is around innovation leadership being grounded in the tension across reality versus dreams. So let me begin with the first theme of desperation versus inspiration. And to illustrate the concept, let me relate to you a simple anecdote that actually happened to me in my life. So some years ago, I was crossing the border of Switzerland. And at the immigration, I put my Indian passport on the counter. The Swiss police officer, he looked at the Indian passport. He looked at me. I was dressed in a suit. And his first question to me was, are you a software programmer? And for me, it was quite a surprise because A, no one had actually thought of that association with me at a police counter in a foreign country, but also because reflecting upon the kind of questions which I had encountered when I first went to America in 1985, it was a world of difference. In 1985, when I went as a foreign student to America, many of my American friends trying to be friendly, generally trying to be welcoming. They often ask me questions like, did you go to school in a bullock cart? Did you have snake charmers in your home? And they were not trying to be mean. They were just trying to be friendly. Americans are very friendly by nature. But what is important out here is how the image of the country has changed. And today, for those of the young students in the audience, you probably don't fully appreciate how dramatic has been this brand image shift of India around the world. Now, if you actually go and look and you ask the question, how did that shift take place over the last 30 years? I would say in the world of software, which has been the prime driver of the shift, there has been two phases. The first phase was more driven by desperation. In the early 90s, the Indian government was essentially bankrupt. And Indian industry was struggling to find customers. I speak regularly with many of the founders of some of the leading Indian IT companies. And some of the founders who today are leading figures in the Indian industry world in general, they sometimes think back upon the times when they had a hard time convincing American customers to ship software programming to India. They just would not trust Indian firms to do software work. How did the Indian firms react? They reacted, A, by adopting quality. So Indian software industry was the first in the world to adopt the notions of software 
quality management. This is very comparable to how Japanese industry, after the Second World War, in the 50s, adopted quality manufacturing principles earlier than American manufacturers. It's the same way Indian software players, they were amongst the first in the world to adopt the principles of software quality management. So that was some kind of a hygiene factor, just being an early adopter of some important principles. But that wasn't enough. What they did, much more than that, was to innovate. They actually changed the software development process. Traditionally, how software development used to be done was you had the programmer sitting next to the customer and listening and hearing what the customer needs were, and the programming was done on site close to the customer. But this was something which was just simply cost prohibitive for the small Indian companies in the mid-1990s. So what did they do? They re-engineered the entire software development process. They went to this model that today has become the global accepted model of offshore software development, in which you got the customer requirements close to the customer, and you, in fact, programmed the software far away from the customer in another site in India or somewhere else. And this was a major revolution in the software industry. And again, Indian companies were the first to, in fact, lead the revolution. Today, it's become standard in the industry. So this really was the first phase in which Indian organizations innovated because they didn't have a choice to survive, to in fact gain some kind of a market share. Today the situation is very different. Many of these Indian companies are among the biggest in the world. They're market leaders in the field. And of course, they're very successful in their own right. But what is impressive is today, these same founders of these companies 30 years ago who were struggling today have become role models for the next generation. And this kind of a shift in terms of mental attitude is an impressive part of how innovation in India has shifted. And I was reminded of this in very stark form when about four years ago, I went back to IIT Delhi for my 25th alumni reunion. So as part of the reunion, you have interaction with the graduating class. So we interacted with the computer science graduating class. And there were around 60 students graduating. Not very different from the number when I graduated, about 50 in my class. And out of pure curiosity, we asked the graduating class, how many of you are going to America or Europe for higher studies? And what was interesting was, of the 60, only three raised their hands. And when you asked the question, what were the rest doing? Many were working with some of the tech companies, both national and international, in India itself. But what was also interesting is a non-trivial minority in the group were also starting their own companies. And some of them later came up and handed their cards to us, you know, with the name, the company name, and the title saying CEO. You know. And very proud. I mean, this is something which was amazing. It's not something that was even considered a valid option when I graduated. And this is possible because really what has happened is the younger generation today is inspired, inspired by the success of the previous generation. And I think a lot of the innovation happening in India today is driven by inspiration and perhaps less so by desperation. But I really believe that innovation happens in one of two conditions, desperation or innovation or inspiration. The second theme for my presentation today 
is around efficiency versus creativity. Now, one of the unfortunate realities of our lives, both as private citizens or as business executives, is that we often fall victim to routine. Think about when you get dressed in the morning. If you actually think of the different possibilities, the combining your various dress components, if you're female, the saris and other kinds of you know, fancy dresses you might have, if you're male, shirts and pants and belts and everything else, and even if you spent just a few minutes evaluating each and every single possibility in terms of combination, the total amount of time for an average wardrobe, an average person would take typically several years just to evaluate the option and choose the right option. But obviously we don't do that, right? So we get dressed, whatever time it takes, 15 minutes, half an hour, maybe sometimes longer, I don't know, for some people perhaps. But we do it because we optimize. We know some combinations work better than others. We have tried some combinations before and we liked it, so we repeat the same. And the same is true for driving to work, your school or to your office. You don't try and discover new paths every day, right? You have a preset path and you go down that path every single day. So what has happened is for sometimes very good reasons, we have built-in routines in our life. Routines that basically save us time, that in fact help us make our lives more manageable. At the same time, these routines are the enemy of innovation. Why? Because innovation inherently requires exploration. Innovation inherently requires creativity. Innovation inherently requires the freedom of time and space to experiment. Innovation inherently requires the ability to fail and take risks. And all these things are not naturally aligned with the pressure to perform and lead our lives by fixed routines. Now, a question which is often posed in this context is, maybe the most of the people should follow routines and we only have a certain number of select individuals who innovate. And maybe really innovation should be the right of some special creative people. So there is one school of thought that says, you know, not everyone can innovate. So let most people do the routine stuff and let some people experiment and innovate. I strongly disagree with that school of thought. And I strongly believe that every single person can innovate. And the proof that I would like to submit for that is looking at a four-year-old child anywhere in the world, be it in India, in America, in Africa, or somewhere. A typical four-year-old child, and many of you probably have either children in that age group of your own or in the family around you. If you just think about how does a four-year-old child behave? A four-year-old child usually observes the environment intently, carefully. Sometimes they stare at you, this intent look, observing every single detail of what you're doing. A four-year-old child constantly asks questions. Sometimes they get tired of the questions. You know, they bother you, they stop you from doing your routine stuff that you have to get done. Question after question after question. A four-year-old child always experiments is trying different combinations, trying different experiments, trying doing things. 